Welcome to Strength Series with Jay. This show is about one thing, getting you strong. So join me as I lead you through 12 progressive workouts that will have you overcoming the impossible in no time. Hey everyone, this is Jay. Welcome to Strength Series. Uh, we're gonna start today with a warm up. So our goals today are to increase body temperature, to prime your mobility, and then to get you ready for all the future training. So we're gonna start right away with Lori here. You're gonna start on your back, on the mat. And I'm gonna go over the goals of each drill. So first what you're gonna do is go one leg straight. You're gonna have your TeraBand. That's gonna go over the other foot in the air. And then you're gonna grab it and hold it there. So it's important to think of this a bit more as a core drill and not a hamstring flexibility drill. So what you're going to do is make sure that you hold this with a mild stretch, maybe 50%. Keep your ribs down and you're gonna slowly bring this leg up and down towards the other foot. So you're gonna come up slow, match and back to the ground. So with everything here, we're gonna go eight times per side. You should feel no increased stretch in that leg that's up. If you do, you know your pelvis is starting to tip and you're not controlling your pelvis. Another thing is, as you start to lower, it helps to exhale fully and lower your rib cage down, inhale to come back up. So we'll go through that eight times. You can also use a belt or you can go against the wall. And then switch legs. So same thing, I start with a big exhale to let my rib cage come down. You should feel your abs engage the whole time. The stretch on that top leg should be about 50% and you should be able to maintain it the whole time. And as you breathe in every time, you wanna think of taking air in to your low back and low ribs and everything expanding out. So we're just teaching her how to stay stable through her torso and just to move through her hips for later exercises. Okay, next drill is a glute bridge. So you'll still be on your back. Hands go into the ground, same idea, rib cage stays down. I want you to squeeze your glutes tight and bridge your hips up. So just hold there for a sec. What you should feel is that you're not right into your back, so it helps to push into the ground, make sure your abs are activated and everything is a nice straight line. And then from there, we're gonna work more on stability. So one leg is gonna march up like you're sprinting, come back down and then alternate sides. So keep doing that. The two things to look out for here are that your hips overall don't start to drop towards the ground. So you stay that nice straight line and that if you were to look from this angle, looking at your own pelvis, you shouldn't be tipping side to side. So we're gonna go eight again per side. Take your time, make sure whatever leg stays in the ground, you really squeeze that glute hard. And then this will activate your glutes as well as stabilizers for future exercises. And as soon as you're done eight per side, we're gonna go into all fours. And don't forget to breathe. Okay, so all fours facing the camera. So here, what we're gonna do is go one leg straight beside you on the ground. We'll go with that leg. You're gonna keep your back perfectly flat, everything really long and straight, and you're gonna slowly rock your hips back and forth eight times. So make sure there's no tilting side to side. You don't feel like your ribs and belly are sagging towards the ground, but you also feel like you're not rounding your way down there. Where you should feel like you're opening up is the groin of this straight leg. So you can do it this way, but you can also play around. And as you go back, you can rock back onto your heel. It'll be a little bit more hamstring, less groin. And we'll do that eight times total. So I think you just have a few more. And then we'll switch sides. So we'll start this foot down and flat. I like to go half and half, so I'll go four this way, four the other way, but it depends on the day and where I feel tightest. But your goal for most of these drills is gonna to be to be straight spine and just moving through your hips. And 
And as soon as you're done this, we'll go back to all fours. I'll walk you through this next one. Okay, so for this one, let's go right leg straight behind you. Left foot turns in, right leg comes back to the ground, and you stay level to the ground. So our goal here is to kind of mobilize this back corner of your hip. So what you want to feel is that you've really loaded all your weight onto this leg and it feels like it's forcing your leg bone up and into the back of your hip. It's going to be hard to keep the weight there, but just try not to really take it off and then load your hands too much. And then we're just going to rock back into a corner there. And there's going to be a tendency to wiggle, so you want to stay as straight as you can. And we're just going to do eight rocks back. And you can just keep rocking back, Lori. And if you want to make this just a little bit more intense, what you're going to do is you're just going to walk your hands out to your right slightly so you're lined up with your mid shin, staying a little closer to the ground and pushing back. And there's going to be, as you can see, like a desire to rock back really far. So you really feel it in your glute, like a pigeon pose, but you actually don't want to go that far. You just want to stay level and just feel like you're getting the last little corner of your hip socket. So we'll try the other side. And then just to go over it again really quick, you're not doing a pigeon pose. You're not looking for the biggest stretch. You're just trying to get your hip or your leg bone to sit nicely into the back of your hip socket. Good, you can try sternum a little closer to the ground so you're a little flatter. So maybe hands wider, yeah. And then when in doubt, I would go for less range than more because chances are you're gonna start to sway your pelvis and ribs just a little bit. Good, then we can hop up. So this next one you can do marching in a lane or on a spot. So it's called a Spider-Man lunge with a reach. And so you want to be straight spine as always. And we're going to try to like mobilize your front hip and then your upper back as well. So I'll go through with Lori. You're going to take a big step back. Try to be a straight line from your tailbone to your head. And what you're going to do is drop into this Spider-Man lunge position. So from here, again, you want to be super straight. And you're going to drop the inside of your right elbow down towards your ankle. So what you want to feel, if you can stick there for one second, is that you're not too twisty through here. You're just getting very deep into this hip. So very deep into flexion and external rotation. Then as you exhale, you're going to rotate up towards the sky. Do a full breath, and I'm going to hold you here for a sec keep this hand planted and pushing the floor away and you just want to feel like you're opening up your upper back. So let's just go through that sequence. It's inhale, open the hip, exhale, open the upper back. And if you look, low back to pelvis is staying pretty neutral. It's not moving too much. And the deeper you can exhale or the longer, the more you'll probably be able to rotate through that upper back. Nice. Let's do the same thing. And then from this angle, you can see that she's keeping the shoulder tucked, maybe even rotate it out a little bit. So just to exaggerate for this one, you want to think of rotating that way to suck that shoulder down in its socket. And you want to feel like you're rotating through each rib individually and opening up your upper back. Don't feel like you need to get that elbow to your ankle or even down to the floor. It actually depends on how mobile that front hip is. Good. And then you see she's keeping her foot firmly planted on the ground the whole time. The next thing we're going to do is inchworms. Remember inchworms? So we'll go forward and back instead of just carrying on. The goal here is to mobilize this back end, but also to stay really firm through the front of your body and then strong through your shoulders. And then if you can just hold this first one. So what usually happens is 
you can do it badly just for one sec, like look up. You don't wanna be hyper extended through here. You wanna feel nice and long and relaxed and pushing through the floor. So now actually walk your feet back out. So then you'll walk back out into a plank. Good, she's nice and firm. And then she's gonna go back with her hands into that same position and forward again. Good. So you have two options. You can do it locomoting forward. So for this next one, come up. Keep looking through, looking through, looking through, and then walk your hands forward. And as you can see, Lori is challenging herself a bit more by really reaching out. You can also just walk straight out into a plank and it won't be as challenging through your torso. And we'll just call this one your last one. Good, and then we'll come up. So for this next one, we're going to do some squats. I'll give you this kettlebell and you'll hold it in a rack like that. So we'll go over two options really quick. So first you can hold any weight in front of you. You just want a little bit of a forward shift so you feel comfortable sitting down. And then you're gonna slowly squat down into your hips staying straight and tight you can see knees track over pinky toes and let's come back up and let's just go through a few of those so we'll do four like that good and let's just do four from the side to go over one more thing so go and hold this last one so you can see this position is really similar to that opening position here so you do that to open up your hip and also, sorry for making you wait there so long, but her pelvis is not tilted under her. She's not overly arched. She's staying straight the whole time. She goes up and down. So let's go again. Good. I'll take that. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some shoulder work. So there's a lot of rings in this program. And so we're gonna take some extra time to prepare your shoulder. So I'm gonna give Lori this bend. You're gonna reach overhead. And actually, can you go flipped around the other way? Like I'll show you your back. Yeah. Okay, so what she's gonna do is she's gonna work on shoulder blades, trying to glide along her rib cage. Just do that as much as she can. So for now, you're gonna reach to the sky, pull your whole shoulder girdle down, and then pull the band apart and feel everything squeeze tight. So this can hug your back and then go back up. So stay tight. And then at the very top, you're gonna spread and open up and repeat again. So we'll do that eight times. Good, so you want the most movement and control here possible. And you can always make it harder by bringing your hands closer together or easier by going apart. And everyone will be different in terms of where this band gets. But once you feel like you're not really opening up and getting those shoulder blades down anymore, that's as far as you wanna go. And you wanna be relaxed through your neck. And after eight, we'll face that way and then come back all the way around like you just finished one. So you can transition from one straight into the other. So this one's called a whip it. So now we're working on shoulder blades parting and coming back together. And so you're gonna reach as far forward as you can, push your upper hand or your, push your back into my hand and then bring your shoulder blades tight together. And now come all the way back again, open right up, push again, good. Then we're gonna pretend she's done eight already. We're gonna do dislocates now. So you're gonna bring the band over your head. You're gonna put those two things together, reach back as far as you can and do the biggest circle you can or the semicircle with a band to your back overhead. And you wanna feel like you're moving through your shoulder blades as much as possible and you're not rolling forward in your shoulder. So you don't wanna feel like you're rolling this way. You wanna feel like it's opening everything up. So let's pretend that's eight as well. And we're gonna do one last drill. So this can get tied off to a post or someone can hold it for you like I'm gonna do. You're gonna grab this here. You're gonna face that way, keeping elbow tight to your body. We'll actually do it together. What you're gonna do is keep everything in a straight position, externally rotate, come back slow. And then you're gonna finish off doing that 10 per side. Really quickly, you can do this without the band to see how much range you have. And then the band shouldn't prevent you from getting there. So if I can get here, I shouldn't have so much tension that I only get to this point. And then after that, you're ready to train.